shepherd lead us, march we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, or our use thy folds prepare. Blessed to receive us poor and sinful though we be thou hast mercy to relieve us grace to cleanse and bow to free blessed newcomer and I'm the pastor here at the Lima United Methodist Church and I want to welcome you to worship. I'm recording on Thursday morning but by the time you see this, this great big pile of lumber, almost $9,000 worth of lumber, will have been turned into walls for a Habitat for Humanity build in Southern Chester County. Today our focus is on one of the I am statements, Jesus saying, I am the Good Shepherd. And I'm counting on Jesus to shepherd me through my feelings of anxiety about whether or not all this uh, lumber will actually turn into walls, enough people will come and the weather will be good and all of that kind of thing. We're so thankful for our Lord and Savior Jesus who shepherds us through every difficult feeling and every difficult experience from death into life. May you be blessed by our worship service today. Hi, I'm Phil Newcomer, and welcome to worship today. Our key verse today is from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verse 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Will you please join me in our call to worship? For resurrection living, God gives us resurrection power. For righteous living, God gives us a righteous guide. For renewed living, God gives us God's renewing spirit. Today and every day, let us follow our good shepherd into new and everlasting life. Our opening prayer this morning is one we'll be reading together. Please join me. You are the good shepherd, Lord. We hear your call. We know your voice. We follow your paths. You lead us beside still waters. 
you guide us to find everlasting life. We come humbly into your presence in praise, worship, and adoration. Our hearts run over with your unfailing goodness and never-ending love. We long to dwell in your house forever. Amen. Our memory verse this month comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 146, verses 1 and 2. Would you please say it with me? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will praise the Lord while I have being. If you enjoy reading and studying scripture, I would urge you to join us for our Tuesday night Zoom Bible study. It occurs every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Um, I uh, have the good fortune of being the person who leads it, and it's a, a wonderful group, and I'd invite you to join us. If you'd like the Zoom link so that you can join us for that Bible study, uh, please email us at limabiblestudy at gmail.com. That's limabiblestudy at gmail.com. Uh, this month in Bible study, we are studying the same I am statements uh, that we are hearing about uh, in Pastor Dory's messages uh, right now. And we're up to the I am statement, I am the good shepherd. And our scripture this morning comes from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. 
So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. And I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. May God add a special blessing to our hearing of this word today. Amen. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. I found myself humming that chorus last week as I parked my car and walked toward the dance studio. It was my first night of tap dancing lessons and I was really nervous. So nervous that I felt moved to pray. I did take tap lessons for a while as a kid. And before moving to Lima, I lived in Newtown and I took tap dancing lessons for two years there as an adult. But it had been over four years since I laced up my tap shoes and even though the class description said mixed levels, beginners welcome, 
I had serious doubts about my ability to keep up. So why put myself through all of this if I'm so nervous about it? Because I had such a great experience with TAP in the past. When I was in Newtown, every Tuesday afternoon as I drove to class, I always had a lot on my mind. Maybe something from my to-do list that didn't get done, or worries about a church member, or concerns about my family or the world. Most weeks I thought about skipping class because I should probably be focusing on all of that important stuff rather than something frivolous like tap dancing. But every Tuesday as I drove home from class, nothing was bothering me anymore. The music, the movement, the noise of the taps on the wood floor, they're all ingredients that add up to serious change in brain chemistry, endorphins, feel good vibes, Every week as I drove home, I gave thanks to God for the blessing of tap class. So I know from experience that tap lessons can be really beneficial to my mental health. And I know that this fall is going to be a very demanding season for pastors in our denomination. So I signed up for tap knowing that I would need some guaranteed stress relieving activities in my schedule. But in order to make myself go to tap last week, I had to overcome a much earlier experience, a bad experience from when I was four years old and I persuaded my mom to take me to dance lessons, which was a good half an hour drive from my little town. It was a big inconvenience, but I was beyond excited. When I went into that dance studio though, for the very first time, all of the girls seemed older than me and they were showing off what looked to me like very advanced moves. And I panicked. I had no one to shepherd me through my fear. The dance teacher was judgmental. My mom was at a loss. So I went home humiliated. Every time I try something new, that dance class failure story is the very first script that rolls through my brain. Do you have a story like that? Recently, I saw a quote, your initial reaction is usually your past trying to impose itself on your present. Your initial reaction is usually your past trying to impose itself on your present. Last week, I really wanted to start my tap dancing class, but my old story from when I was four years old, over 50 years ago, that story was still really loud in my head. And it took work to call on my spiritual resources and ask Jesus to shepherd me past that old, old fear so I could go through the dance studio door and enjoy myself. Shepherding us through our fears. What a beautiful way to think of what Jesus does for us. I like how in this passage, Jesus compares himself to hired hands. Hired hands are people who will do the job for a while, but when the going gets rough or a better opportunity comes by, they leave, right? But that's not the kind of shepherd we have. We are here today with an empty cross at the front of our worship space because Jesus did not run away. Jesus did not put his own interests first. Jesus did just the opposite. He put us first. He laid down his life only to take it up again so his sheep could follow him into new life as well. He trusted God to shepherd him through his fears. And now he does that for us. In this season, fall 2022, I feel God is calling me to deepen my trust in Jesus the Good Shepherd. There are times when I forget about his faithfulness and start to act as if Jesus is more of a hired hand who may or may not be super invested in helping me when I need him. Do you know that feeling? I get nervous. I have doubts. Things aren't always fair and I get frustrated. Sometimes I feel like the world is changing too fast and other times I feel like it's not changing fast enough and I can get a little frenzied. If you serve on any church committee, you've seen that firsthand. So I have to get quiet. I learned this from a therapist I work with long ago. 
I had some hard things I needed to talk about and I was very nervous and I asked the therapist how to handle the fear and he said, get quiet and the trust will flow. Get quiet and the trust will flow. That has turned out to be true for me again and again. Get quiet, like the psalmist wrote, be still and know that I am God. Get quiet and listen for the voice of the good shepherd. Get quiet and allow Jesus to shepherd me beyond my wants and beyond my fears from death into life. The better we can get at this in our personal lives, the better we will be able to do it as a congregation. They say the most frequent words spoken in church are, we never did it that way before. <laughs> Behind that statement is an old voice of fear. It might be a fear of failure or fear of change or something more insidious like a fear of being deceived or defrauded. This is an initial reaction. The past trying to impose itself on our present. But in order to move forward as a church, we need Jesus to shepherd us beyond our fears, through our wants, past our resistance, from death into life. I wonder if this is why the early church decided to use the adjective good to describe the Friday on which Jesus was killed. It was good only in the sense that Jesus' death led to new life. The early church claimed an unlikely word but it's one that Jesus had used to describe himself. It surprises me that Jesus called himself the good shepherd because, well, doesn't that seem like a bit of an understatement? It would be more accurate to say that Jesus is the ultimate shepherd. He's so committed to protecting his sheep and leading them where they need to go that he's willing to lay down his life for his flock. So the good shepherd is also our Paschal lamb and we, the sheep, are also called to be, good, to be shepherds for others. After the resurrection, Jesus told Peter to feed his sheep. That is our Christian calling. We who have been shepherded beyond our wants and beyond our fears, now get to help shepherd others. We get to invest ourselves in caring for the sheep. Matt Rawl, in his book, Jesus Revealed, connects this idea to Psalm 23, which begins, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And it ends with, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The goodness and mercy that follow us, Matt Rawl says, This is like the wake we leave behind us. This is our legacy. We leave things better than we found them. This is one of the reasons I'm so excited about our Help Build Hope project. Last September, we hosted our first build and it was a lot of fun. And almost 100 people volunteered in some capacity to build all the walls to a Habitat for Humanity house. The walls got trucked all the way down to Troop County, Georgia. And as the truck pulled away, I think all of us were filled with a sense of satisfaction and hope. Unfortunately, the Habitat for Humanity office in Georgia that received our walls has encountered a lot of red tape with their building project and the walls we made are still in their warehouse. They are hoping to break ground next month and will send us photos of the project as it moves along. These delays have been of course disappointing to them and they've been disappointing to us because we were so looking forward to our walls becoming a house to help a real family. When it came time to decide if we wanted to do another Help Build Hope weekend, we had to wrestle with some competing feelings, satisfaction and hope on the one hand and concern on the other. We don't wanna spend all that time and energy on walls that aren't going to get used on, on the one hand, right? On the other hand, it's 2022. And so much of life is just not functioning as it normally would. Project delays are pretty normal these days. We had strong feelings in the pro column and strong feelings in the con column. Isn't that so often the case in life? I find myself wrestling with competing feelings a lot, especially the hope and the worry combination. I felt that way about tap class. Tap class. I was hopeful it would be a great experience, but I had a worry I would be embarrassed. 
I have these competing feelings about my upcoming assignment as a disaffiliation guide. We might be feeling that way about an anticipated doctor's appointment or a family gathering or a church meeting. Worry and hope, expectation and fear. We all have wants, we all have anxieties, but Jesus wants to shepherd us beyond them. In order to be shepherded, is that a verb? I don't know. In order to be guided by our good shepherd beyond our will into God's will, we have to get quiet. We have to ask Jesus to help us get quiet and hear his voice. What does Jesus say about our wants and fears, about our hopes and concerns, about our competing feelings? We want to do all we can to hear his voice so that we don't let our initial reaction, which might be a very old voice from our past or a voice from uh, the world around us, not Jesus's voice. We don't want those voices to determine our future. Here at Lima, we applied this technique to our feelings about help build hope. We listened to our collective concerns and fears and wants and preferences, and we decided to give it another try. And as we wait for our first set of walls to turn into our house, into a house, I think Jesus has a message very different from the old voices in our heads. I think Jesus is saying, goodness and mercy are, are following you. These walls will make the difference of a lifetime. Take the long view and don't be afraid to try again. Life rarely goes according to plan, but that doesn't mean good things aren't happening. By the time you hear this message, we'll have a second set of walls on their way to West Grove in Southern Chester County. Even more goodness and mercy are following us. As a kid, I learned a song at church camp. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I think the song is actually based on Matthew 25, and it has a second verse about not wanting to be a goat, but I never remembered that one. I really like the sheep part. I just want to be a sheep that knows the voice of my shepherd. I want to be a sheep that trusts my entire life, my well-being today, my future, my legacy, my everything, to Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. I want a wake of goodness and mercy to follow me. I want to leave things better than I found them. And I know you want that too. And to do that, we have to learn to get quiet. We have to learn to overcome the other voices clamoring in our heads. We have to learn to distinguish the voices of the false shepherds and instead follow our good shepherd. The way we will know for sure if it's Jesus' voice we are hearing is that it will be the voice that ultimately leads us to new life. It might not make us feel better in the, in, in the moment or even in the short, short term, but in the long term, it reaps eternal rewards. So last week, despite the old failure story soundtrack on repeat in my head, I claimed my faith in Christ. I walked through the door of the dance studio. I laced up my tap shoes. I introduced myself to everyone I met. I did my best to follow the teacher. And I left the class with all the good feelings I was hoping to have. And also sore hips that I needed to take Tylenol for. But I did feel like I was shepherded past my fears into new life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Whether we're facing a minor challenge or a major one, individually or collectively, may this be our constant prayer. Amen. Hello, this is Linda Youngstrom. I am here to invite you to participate in the fall rummage sale, which will be October 6th, 7th, and 8th. That's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, this is an opportunity uh, to work together and to have Christian fellowship. 
We also are uh, having the United Methodist Men on Thursday night from, from 4.30 to 6 to serve dinner. They're going to have a grill and they're going to be cooking food and, and have um, drinks for sale, soda. So let's help them also. We're looking forward to, to this event because we are raising funds and then we also, you're so generous, you are so generous with your donations um, that we have surplus to distribute afterwards. So our, our money and our surplus, we share with our neighbors, uh, locally with St. Daniel's Church and First, um, First United Methodist Church of Media, a city team in Chester, and Nana's Attic Treasures. Um, so locally, we, we have a lot of contacts and, and we're, we're, we're working locally with your generous gifts. There are across the United States, uh, the United Women in Faith have over 90 sites that provide services for women, children, youth, and seniors. Internationally, through the United Methodist Women in Faith, there are mission projects in over 100 countries. So we would like to have you sign up, uh, which is possible on the church bulletin, uh, on the bulletin board in the hallway, the United uh, Women in Faith, their little bulletin board, and also uh, with the lima beans. There's a there's this um, electronic site there and on the website. And that'll take you directly to Sign Up Genius. All three of those threads of, of information, uh, Christina Ayub has very generously, is collating them, putting them all together, typing it up and putting it on the bulletin board. So if you forget, check the bulletin board. And finally, I'd like to say your prayers are really appreciated. They support us in getting organized. They support people in volunteering. They support people in donating and they support people in coming. So all of this to be of service to God's family. Uh, blessings and I thank you. Our benediction today comes from Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 and 21. May the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.